try to keep it uh, very brief because uh, Dimitris already presented several times <coughs> and I cannot speak uh, much today. Uh, so, well, we managed to publish this study already. It's accepted in Structural Engineering International. But anyway, we discussed uh, a lot uh, yesterday, so we got some small new insights. But the, the brief of the study is like this. Uh, it's about the roof of the stadium uh, constructed in 1990s uh, in northern Italy uh, in, uh, <coughs> in the altitude uh, uh, similar to where we are now. Uh, the capacity of the stadium is for 1,000 spectators, so it's uh, considered that roof structure is uh, not only roof uh, is uh, CC uh, three <coughs> uh, consequence class, <coughs> and uh, well, structural system we ha we had to look at uh, uh, member level, but also at uh, system level. And uh, the main the main idea behind this is that local authority was not satisfied with the finding that. Uh, resistance of the stadium is not complying with requirements of Euro codes because it was designed according to old uh, Italian code and uh, Euro codes uh, uh, increased uh, snow loads uh, also in Italy. So roughly speaking, uh, according to Euro code, you, you can the partial factor design uh, uh, <coughs> using the partial factors uh, you get uh, you find out that 90% uh, of the resistance is, uh, you need 10% more. And uh, just for simplification, the main counter beam is uh, like this one, so uh, uh, this is the simplified uh, structure uh, layout. <coughs> and uh, for this case, uh, reliability is totally dominating by snow load because we have a steel uh, steel beam in bending because of bracing, so uh, the main uncertainties are here on this side and uh, we argued that uh, one possible safety measure accepted in year 1990 as well in ISO 2094 is to uh, undertake uh, monitoring. Uh, here is the overview of uh, main uh, basic variables, so we considered mobile uncertainties, ship factor, snow load, and uh, we did some analysis of system behavior, but I will skip uh, details of this. We did a lot uh, on uh, snow load modeling uh, for different monitoring alternatives. I think this is the core of the study, but uh, well, I will not uh, manage to discuss this in uh, 10 minutes. But basically, uh, the situation with snow load quite uh, recognized in Eurocode is that even if you comply with, uh, with the Eurocode and you do probabilistic analysis, you uh, do not uh, reach uh, target reliability. So by, by probabilistic analysis, we are not able to show that uh, reliability is sufficient. So then uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, started to think about monitoring. So uh, we compared uh, uh, actually, four alternatives, no monitoring, uh, and then three alternatives of monitoring uh, to <coughs> consult the ground snow loads uh, with the nearest meteorological station, to have a snow depth measurement on the roof and the snow water equivalent measurements on the roof. Everything is available on the market or in the local uh, meteorological service. So this is the first decision. The second decision is what to do if some threshold is exceeded. And uh, then we considered two alternatives, either to clean the roof or to close temporarily uh, the stadium. So we did uh, some <coughs> analysis of costs, which was relatively uh, easy. Uh, and, uh, but then uh, what is uh, very interesting in this study, I think, is to define the threshold. So uh, you have an uh, online measurement of, uh, of snow load in some way and uh, you have to decide when the situation is, let's say, so dangerous that uh, you should do something. So we did uh, this on the basis of very simple cost-benefit analysis. So we compared the uh, cost of, and let's now focus on cleaning of the roof, so cost of the cleaning of the roof 
and we compare this with fail consequences. So we know what happens if the structure fails, multiplied by probability of failure specified for the observed uh, snow load. So this is the this fail probability is already dependent on the outcome of measurement. And by comparing these, we found out some threshold. So this threshold means that if the snow load exceeds this value, you should take uh, some action. And actually, which of the actions you should take is uh, very difficult to generalize because in a, se in a part of the season when a stadium is frequently used, so then you very likely clean the roof. But in a, maybe, maybe during the Christmas time, the, uh, the stadium is not uh, fully utilized, so you may decide to close it uh, temporarily. And the cost of failure, just the failure of the structure or the casualty? Uh, yeah, we included uh, this. This was uh, simplified because this would need another paper probably to analyze this properly. But uh, we tried to estimate, uh, let's say, structural repair costs and uh, also to use some fatalities, given uh, <coughs> uh, this was derived uh, based on this on assumptions of some collapse area and on some statistics uh, available from literature, if there is some collapsed uh, area, how many fatalities uh, you can expect. So this, but this was very simplified. This is not. So these failure consequences we did estimate, but we only estimate. You know, this is not. But the probability of failure at the moment you measure the snow, yeah. the probability of failure in this moment is zero, right? No, no, it's not. Yeah, but the roof is there. Yeah, but the roof is there. Yeah, but uh, what, what important... So you could, you, 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 could, you could say that wait, you wait, estimate wait. the probability of no, failure no, no, for no, the next no. day when there's no snow. No, 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 wait, wait. We, uh, we included in the analysis forecast for three days. Yeah. Uh, for uh, right. very good. And uh, it's not very logical, right? Yeah, we yeah. also quantified the uncertainty for this forecast, which is mm -hmm. uh, which can be easily done relatively because they know what they forecast. And if they check the three days, so then yeah. they play with it. <coughs> so we got this information. This is uh, I will skip this. And uh, so for different uh, monitoring alternatives, we specified different thresholds. And of course, these differences result from different uncertainties which are included, uh, which are uh, associated with the alternatives. So in alternative one, we have a convert very uncertain conversion from ground to roof load. In alternative two, which is more expensive and even more uncertain, we have uh, the translation from snow depths to snow load due to snow density. So this is, um, this is not a well, obviously not, uh, not the best alternative. In the last alternative, we have a very <coughs> limited uncertainty because of the measurements, but we measure snow water equivalents on, uh, on the roof, but it's, mm, it's more expensive, naturally. So then, oh, I made some damage here. Uh, so the last step of the analysis is, uh, let's say, total cost optimization or decision making. So, in general, we have some acquisition costs, some operational costs, we have some time factor, I will skip that. And then we have, uh, we have uh, costs of safety measure if the threshold is exceeded. Again, multiplied by some time factor, but we have to think about it. How much, how frequent is the situation that the threshold is exceeded? And here we come to the very specific issue of the snow load because uh, the local authority is actually afraid of events which have written periods of one once per 20 years or once per 50 years even for better hotel, for better monitoring so we are talking about very rare events and about closure for one week for two weeks so this is more or less nothing and uh, this this ends up with uh, approval of a benefit of this uh, monitoring scheme and show the results. But we have to estimate how frequent, how frequently we can expect this situation, and we did it from uh, from the measurements we had uh, available uh, from the nearest uh, meteorological station. <coughs> and uh, finally, for uh, 
for assumed uh, reference period, so maybe for 10 years of future use or for 20 years of future use, future use of the structure. We plotted uh, total costs and uh, we see that alternative two, so measurements of snow depths is nothing. But then uh, the first and third alternative can, uh, optimum decision can change between these two because for short periods it's, uh, it's uh, cheapest or it's better to use just information from a meteorological service which is uh, for free for the local authority. <coughs> but for, for a longer perspective, uh, reduced uncertainty with some increased acquisition costs for the third alternative is uh, outperforms uh, alternative uh, M1. So, well, this is the main conclusion, and yeah, we did uh, this uh, flowchart. And yesterday we discussed also some possible uh, some possible alternatives for this study. So, uh, well, I will not uh, comment on this now, but yeah, there, there are some also proposals, like for instance, to is inspect possibility. Uh, can we get some some gain uh, if we measure? Uh, displacement of the structure, so inspired by the, by the Blivice case, uh, we believe that uh, very likely not, but maybe uh, maybe uh, this could be also another way to improve information. Okay, so this is th that's. <coughs> Very good. So are there some questions? Well, we are satisfied with uh, the value we got from the analysis, but uh, maybe you can help us to reformulate and to... I think everything is there. Yeah. Maybe I was not using the correct terms uh, all the time, but... Uh, uh, so the prior here is uh, actually inspection of, uh, or uh, the alternative of no monitoring. Yes. So we did analyze this. Oh yeah, okay. It's, it was sorry. It was not shown, by the way, in the uh, in the graph. I forgot. Okay. Very good. But uh, so you plan to update uh, the test sheet and then yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I think this is an important uh, point. Uh, the uh, deliverables of this workshop. And this is updated fact sheets. And yeah. Uh, the, we have, do we have a deadline? Yes, of course. Mid-December, mid so <laughs> update of uh, the fact sheet for each of the case studies. Uh, Mid-December, or uh, for the few cases where we don't have the fact sheet yet, uh, please submit the fact sheet mid-December. Yeah. Uh, uh, for updated mm -hmm. fact sheets, if our existing one is six pages, let me go eight pages. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.